Hi, welcome to today's program. I'm Michael Stewart. Well, you know, the topic of domestic violence is public concern, and uh, there is a serious, serious interest in uh, the way how we are moving towards addressing this particular matter. I'm of the view that in the church, we need to probably speak out more on the topic. I know that some people may have had their own opinion on that and figure that we are doing enough or at least we should not be criticized for doing so much. But even in my own church, my own congregation, I feel that we have not been saying enough on the subject. Now, mind you, there is no church I know that supports domestic violence. No church that I know that would be able to say, yet we are in support of it. But I do feel that we need to be able to speak out publicly on the subject. We may be doing some things privately, but the people who are doing these nefarious things are doing them publicly. And so, therefore, it is necessary for us to have a public voice on it. So I approached the church and started to teach a series on domestic violence within the church. And within the church, the subject has become quite um, a talking point. And at the same time, let me really commend the Adventist church because when I did the research, I recognized that the Adventist church maybe have been the most active in researching the subject and trying to bring up some answers to deal with it. So we started the series on domestic violence and the church. And we looked at the whole subject of abuse. Because really it starts off with abuse, even though domestic violence is abuse, but it really starts off with subtle areas of abuse. So we had the name out a number of those areas that you will hear in the clip coming up. Um, we dealt with financial abuse because people think that only hitting is the only abuse that is known, but you could financially abuse somebody economically, take away their dignity of living, hoarding money away from them. Then you have the physical abuse, the one that is most popular in hitting and pushing and restraining, etc. That is also um, abuse that takes place in relationships. Then you have mental and psychological abuse. You'll hear in the recording where I spoke about gaslighting, which is a system of abuse that makes a person think that they are going mad, that they're insane because of things that you are doing to make them come to that conclusion. So we, we dealt with, with those and a number of other areas of abuse. And of course, we can't leave out sexual abuse. Even in a marital relationship since 1993, sexual abuse in marital relationship is illegal. And so therefore, we've got to be mindful of this and support it. Now, International Women's Day is more than just abuse. It's about empowering women. And we need to be able to be there to support our women as they go into their own state of empowerment. And I think that it must be backed by men and children and women, and of course, of all places, by the church. So as we go into this subject, I want you to be able to give it a listen. This is just part one, and we have other parts that will follow. Whether or not you are married people, it is still a place. Right? If you hit the person, that is also abuse. If you slap the person, it is abuse. If you box the person, it is abuse. If you strangle the person, it is abuse. And that is holding them around the neck. Now, you may tell yourself, I didn't hit them. But the fact that you strangle them, it is abuse. And you may say that the person didn't die. It is still abuse. Restraining a person against their will, holding them down, is abuse. If they don't want to be held down. Reckless driving while you are vexed to scare the person is abuse. You see? So some people drive fast, and you see them on the road driving fast, two people inside of it, and you ask yourself, what's going on inside of there? And they're quarreling, which I have seen myself on many occasions. That is abuse because the person is scared for their life. They can't jump out because the car is moving too fast, and they don't want to stay inside. Um, because of, of the state of the person. So it has become abuse. Invasion of personal space is also abuse. You are in your house and the person is banging down your door 
to come inside, it is abuse. You, in, you go and you put yourself in some secure place, you go in the washroom or bathroom in order to, to, to keep them out, and they're still invading your space. They're coming into your room, etc. It's abuse. Making a person feel unsafe, generally, as long as the person feels insecure, unsafe around you, it is abuse. So, in some cases, when we reflect in our own lives, at some point or the other, all of us would have experienced some measure of abuse. Yeah? Some more than others. And some have endured it longer than others. Sexual abuse, which is also physical, but because of the nature of it, we have separated from the physical and deal with it from sexual. Rape or any time it is forced, is abuse. So you can't use an excuse and say that she was looking for it. It is no excuse. You cannot say that she was flirting with me and last minute she changed her mind and so she had no right to play with me and your force her. It is sexual abuse. A person can change their mind at any point that they so desire. Withholding sex is abuse. No, 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 no. <laughs> if you are, you are in a relationship, marital relationship with somebody, and you are refusing to give sex, you are abusing the person because most people get married for sex. They expect that within it. And you, you're withholding that which you are expected to deliver. So you're not supposed to take it. But you're not supposed to withhold it either. Yeah? Okay? <laughs> Using sex as a weapon. Using sex as a weapon. Having sex with someone else to get back at your spouse. He do me, I want him to see how it feel. Using that sex is a weapon. And using sex in the case where you're taking rough sex for your own pleasure to the displeasure of the other person is also sexual abuse. Uh, are we on board? So just because you like rough sex does not mean that you are entitled to it if the person is not part of that process who also likes or wants rough sex. As long as they're feeling pain, as long as they are going through, through stress, etc. Now, and probably this is why it's hard for the church to really talk about it. Because how can you really come forward before a holy set of people who are blood-bought, spirited, and start talking about these things? So we've avoided it because it's just not comfortable to deal with. But let me tell you, plasters and all involved in this. Yes? People who high up in the church involved in this. You know why sometimes it's really not, it's common. When you look at these statistics, the height of abuse that takes place among church folk. It is said from those who have done this study, because church gives you an unchecked confidence just because you are a member of the church, just because you are a Christian, just because you call God's name, we just give you the full confidence that you will not be doing anything that goes against it. So even when we hear something, we deny it. We say, nah, it mustn't be so. Worse yet, if the person has rank, position, hold office in the church, then why would we want to tarnish the church by saying all these things? You've seen all the issues of pedophilia that takes place in churches. 
and the kind of cover-up that had been happening. So what you do is just move one preacher or priest from one stage to the next and just put them out and so on and, and think that that is going to, to solve it. What we have done really is relocate the issue. That's all. Willful, uninvolved sex that creates frustration and disinterest in the other partner. Where in the marital relationship, there is no collaboration and assistance and sharing of each other's body. That is also part of sexual abuse. So since 1993, it has become illegal for a man or a woman to take sex without the consent of their own wife or husband. Did you all know that? Before that, it was quite legal. Because once you are married, it was thought that you're entitled to it. But now, it's illegal to take it without their consent. All right, any questions so far before we move on? Yeah? And I could understand if we're not going to have too many questions or statements inside of this one. No, serious. I am quite okay with that. Yes? I was reading in the Bible, right? Where they say... Um, Is this born properly? I was reading in the Bible and um, they say Adam knew his wife, right? There were no wedding ceremony so knowing a woman is by having intercourse so now these days where we have the ceremony is that just a law of the land or is it really knowing intercourse to be your wife partner husband and wife right so that's a whole new topic to this one here. But when the Bible says Adam knew Eve, he spoke about intercourse. Right? So they had intercourse. But remember before that, the Bible says God brought the woman unto the man and said, this is now bone of your bones and flesh of your flesh. He did the ceremony. We have our method of ceremony of the white dress with the long gong. But that is just cultural. All of those issues are cultural. Even the rings are cultural and so on. There are some places they don't even spend for rings. They just put on a tattoo on the finger, which is quite cheaper and it lasts longer. It makes a problem for divorce because, yeah. So, so that's a whole new topic of its own, yeah? Any other question before we move on? So we have verbal abuse emotional abuse, which happens to be one of the most common methods of abuse, where we humiliate people, damage their self-esteem, tell them all kind of things about their body, their anatomy, how they look, how they smell, and we, we try everything to embarrass people, is emotional abuse. This form of abuse is common in both men and women. And if you ask me my personal view, I think when it comes to verbal abuse, men may be more victims of verbal abuse than women. That's my personal view. Yeah? Because when women are ready to tell you the mind, they empty their soul. A man may say two, three things. And it may be sharp, but as I said, that's my personal view. But it comes from both sides, both men and women. The abuse is hard to detect since it affects the person emotionally. So there are, some, there are people who, there are children who have been abused by their parents emotionally by what the parents have been telling them. You understand? You don't, you'll come out to be nothing. You'll, make, you'll never make anything good of yourself, and so on. And we damage their self-esteem, and abuse has been taking place in Caribbean families for years. Because we thought, this is how you talk to children. You embarrass them, we say all kinds of things, we go down to their school, we deal with them publicly, etc. So we have done all of this thing 
incorrectly for years. And that abuse, the person grows up with that self-esteem problem and those issues. You will have also in the state where you have public embarrassment. So a, ma a woman has a problem with her husband. She goes on his job and embarrasses him on the job. It is abuse. The, the, the man goes to her job, tries to get her fired by making a whole set of action on her job so that the people will say, listen, we can't take on all of this issue, so it's best we believe you, and we don't have to deal with that because of the condition of your husband. That is abuse that takes place against her. Calling a person derogatory names. You see? So we say that some of the when you call your wife a prostitute or a whore, you are actually abusing her verbally by calling her that. You see? So all sort of derogatory names that, that we call, exposing very private information to others, very, very private, intimate information, and sometimes bedroom information that you have made public to other people just because you are the person vexed. Facebook is a popular medium for abusive persons. The largest gathering of abusive persons, verbal abusive persons, is found on Facebook. And it also shows the quantum of cowards that we have because Nobody can retaliate against you on Facebook. And some of them don't even put a face on Facebook so that they can do it in secret. And what they do sometimes change their status or their profile. So who you think is doing the abuse is not somebody else. It is, they're using a different person. Cowards, and yet they appear to be brave. That is abuse, and also now we have the whole bill or law where they're bringing in. I don't, I'm not sure if it's, it's valid and active. Yes, it is, because I think somebody has already sued under cyberbullying. Yeah, you've heard of it? Cyberbullying. Mental and psychological abuse. This one is quite interesting. There is something called gaslighting. Have you ever heard of that? Gaslighting. There's a movie that's called Gaslighting also. It is when over a period of time, you treat with someone in a way that they begin to question their own sanity. Yeah? Have you ever been to such a point that you start saying, but I must be, I feel something wrong with me. And it's because the person make you feel as though something wrong with you. So in Gaslighting, what they used to do, this man who wanted his wife to think she's mad. You know, you'll put down your car keys or your house key. You know you put it there. And they will remove it. And you can't find it. And they'll tell you, you did not put it there. And you tell him, but I put it there. And then it shows up somewhere else. And they say, but I must be really losing it in truth. But they don't do it once. They do it again. And again and again. They do different things. You will lock the door before you leave home. They will sneak back in and unlock it. And ask you, you lock the door? Yes, I lock it. Go and check it. And when you check, door unlock. And they tell you, no, man. It's called gaslighting to bring a person to the point of in thinking that they are insane. Now, here's what. A person who gets to that stage of gaslighting doesn't want to tell anybody. Because who wants to tell everybody, you know, I think I'm going crazy. So you keep it silent. That is the insidious act of gaslighting, where we begin to shut the person down from even getting help or getting to realize that this is not so, so they're not sharing it with anybody else because they want to keep it to themselves. Right? So remember that term, gaslighting. 
lying with a straight face. Sometimes I think my train just trying to let me think I crazy. <laughs> you see? They would, somebody would lie to you. You will be in possession of the truth. And they will watch you straight. Don't blink nothing. And lie. And even cry. At their own lie. No, that, and then he says, no, 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 no. And you start to really check yourself, but I don't think that they'll really lie so straight face. I don't think that they would do that. And other people start, because it, other people, you might call in other people to witness and so on, and then they say, no, nah, I, I feel he telling the truth. Why right? feel she telling the truth? And you begin to tell yourself, no, man, I'm going crazy. But it happens over a period of time. Yeah? I hope this is helping you all. Even if it is not to help you, the reason why I wanted to do it is so that you may have friends, you may have co-workers, and I want you to help them to identify some of the things that they may be going through that they may share with you in confidence that they have no idea how to deal with it. It equips you to be able to help people. Deny they said or did something even though you know that they did it. You understand? The other day you hit me. Me? Hit you? But how could that have two different versions? I never lay my hand on you. I swear to God. And the person is telling somebody else who's trying to quell this situation. Uh, and you know, in, in sessions that, that I do, it's usually brings me to a state of puzzle for somebody to make an outright statement like that and have an opposite side and you can't judge so you don't know really who's telling the truth one said yes he hit me next one said no i didn't hit um but then later on if you push hard enough you might say you might hear them say um realize that they didn't hit the shuv so shuv is not hit you see, they call you crazy, and then you start to believe it. And here's why sometimes we call people crazy. We call people crazy because they don't agree with us. So you must be crazy not to agree with my position, my perspective, and the way how I see things. And then you start saying that everything that person says is always better than my own opinion. And so what you'd become by just a rubber stamp person? Yes, I agree. And you agree with me? Yes, I agree. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, I understand. But you don't understand and you don't agree. But you have lost your voice to have a position on a matter. That is abuse. There are more things around the house. Right, we spoke about that. They move things around the house. Um, and make you think you, that you don't know what, what you're doing. Financial abuse. Yes. Let's take a question. And stop me anytime if you have something. Just going back to the, why, the crazy. Sometimes instead of crazy, people call you stupid so often. You think you're stupid. So you don't want to voice your opinion. You don't want to say anything because you're stupid. You think you're saying making sense. Right. Yes. So stupid is another word that people use. That is both verbal abuse also on psychological abuse because if somebody has been told enough that they are stupid sometimes even when they have something to say they start it and can't finish it because they must be, I must be talking shubhini so it's best I don't say it so you have lost your will you don't have a thought of your own and what helps in a relationship is when people can feel free to speak and feel free to express themselves and how they think and so on. And once that is taken away from the relationship, there's no value that you could get from a conversation like that. If only the conversation can be in one side of the discussion. Yes? So stupid happens to be one of those. And in our plan, you're too stupid. Now, that we use quite often more than you're crazy. 
And, and there may be some other words that people use in order to be able to say them. Financial abuse. Because remember, abuse is about power and control. Always. Abuse is about power and control. Somebody who feels they have power and somebody who feels they can control people, if you give both pe some people both power and control, they are likely to abuse. So, if you empower people, then what you are doing is if you have power and you empower people and you can understand and relate and share power, that is an ideal situation of sharing of power. But when you have to usurp power, then it has become abuse. So you share power and you share control. Let me tell you how, how, how this works. If somebody in a family has to make a major financial decision in a family, husband and wife, should that be shared? It has to be shared because that is power and control. So you, must, you can't make a decision just because you are the money owner. Let's say the man is earning the money and the woman is not. She must have an input. On that let's say she's the one who works for more money than he does that must be shared the information because it impacts all of us so that we both make a decision so that we share power and we share control one is moving from one country to go and work in another you're leaving Tobago to go work, go and take up a job in Trinidad before you accept that job you need to share that information the other person may not want to move the other person may not want to uproot the children from the school or what have you. It must be shared. And so you can't take those kind of de economic decisions and the power and control decisions and amass it onto one's own self. Otherwise, it is abuse. Money is one of the powerful ways of taking control. So... If my wife has my credit card, which she does, and she goes and takes out an unauthorized large amount of the credit card, which she won't, and if she does, it will bounce. But for those who have the amount of credit on it, and they go and they wipe out your account without your knowledge on your credit card or your debit card. That's financial abuse. I hope that you were able to gain something from that because we really think that it is necessary for us to be able to speak out on the subject of abuse. And we have another part that will be coming up and we want to talk about some of the things. What does Christ view? How is Christ view on abuse and, and, and how is it that we are supposed to deal with issues of abuse in the family? Because one of the things that we have to talk about is counseling in abuse. Do we send back the victim to the source of abuse? And how does that relate to the whole issue of divorce and remarriage, etc., that the church is, um, has a position on, on some of these things? It is going to be a very interesting program, and I w wish that you will be able to follow us. I'm Michael Stewart. Look to see you on the next program.